this should be interesting. We're gonna talk about pop culture and YouTube and TikToks and being influencer and music and hip hop and everything. It's, it's gonna be fun. We'll open with this, 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away which means avoid them at all costs but if you look at everything I just said there like all that whole list I rattled off that's from the Bible I said it's from 2 Timothy New Testament I know you know that but that's a that's just a really cool diss track on YouTube where like youtubers are dissing each other like a really a really well crafted one that encompasses all this stuff I mean, if you think about it at its core, it's just right off the top, so much of hip hop, like that's what it's about. I'm this, I'm that, I'm the best, I'm a god, I'm the king, I'm better than you, I have all the things. Lovers of self constantly sing about themselves and how great they are, and the lifestyle, and this is Europe, and all of these things. I mean, forget about all the, you know, like the epidemic of not everybody knows what the word narcissism means. Because that's what, you know, pointing a phone at yourself, the Stanley Kubrick 2001 Space Odyssey, Black Obelisk. Who would have thought that when he made that movie he wanted it to be a TV screen, but it was too obvious. But now we have a phone, and it has all these things. Uh, even people on welfare, you can get a phone for you and everyone in your family. You just tell them how many phones you need. I don't know if it's changed, but I can't imagine it's changed. That's probably one of the things they're keeping. So... But look at this list. It says in the last days. Now everything since Jesus ascended into heaven and he hasn't come back, you know, to be king and make a new heaven and a new earth. So it's all the last days. But now we have a lot of the stuff on this list. For men will be lovers of themselves. Okay, that's, you could uh, equate that with self-abuse. I don't want to misquote the Bible. But yeah, lovers of themselves, indulging in everything, cam girls making idols unto themselves, trying to make an extra, you know, like 150 bucks a month on easy fans. Um, boasters, proud blasphemers. I mean, it's everybody saying what they think about stuff. I mean, I feel like I got myself into a lot of trouble where I would say vulgarities and coarse language and silliness and all the things that God hates and then quote scriptures and stuff like that. So if I'm going to talk about the Bible and hold it in my hands, then I really have to change the way that I'm doing you know pretty much everything I want to be closer to dad but now I want to talk about pop culture disobedient to parents unthankful this is that entitlement thing they talk about over here in the West um, unholy I mean I hate that on a lot of Sundays when I drive to church I see at least one bumper sticker on like a Jeep or some kind of th new thing and it's got like an upside down star on it or it's got stickers of everything on it, every religion except there's no crosses and it's all down on Jesus and stuff. Um, traitors, headstrong, haughty, haughtiness, oh everything's so haughty. That's what it's about, right? If you're an influencer or trying to be, everybody online no matter how old they are, whether they're too old like me or too young or just the right age to have all the wrong opinions and just say them, like it's on there, like you can just say anything on YouTube like the YouTube that's all this like making videos on YouTube you know depending on what you do um, you know some stuff's informational and it's not really about vanity it's like hey I can make a, a job telling people how to I don't know homestead or something and uh, they're useful or how to how to fix things I've gone on like what's wrong with my fridge I figured that out from a YouTube um, trouble with livestock figure how to milk a goat and keep them in the stanchion. YouTube. Um, but along with all that is bad stuff like lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. People saying that they can, that you can be a God. It's a very popular thing amongst the youth. Um, having a form of godliness, you know, made in the image and likeness of the Creator, I suppose that could be 
seen as that. I don't know. Um, and from such people turn away. So it means like avoid these people. Like all this stuff that's what a lot of people watch on YouTube or even on Tubi or whatever. It's all bad. It's the perilous time. Like the, are the perilous times coming? It seems like things are like pretty tense you know, like everywhere. Um, it's awful for a lot of people. Uh, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters. I mean, that really sums up hip hop. And like when you ask young people what they want to be, and they're like, I don't know, I want to be rich or I want to be famous. Or there was uh, statistics which I don't have that said that they people wanted to make content. Like I want to make videos. Like that's what they wanted to do after school. A lot of people do get to do this. I don't know how much money they make. I was never in it for the money. I was in it for well probably some kind of horrible ego vanity thing because this is my free open mic and now I have to learn how to talk to people you know without saying things that God hates because I'll be judged for this so it changes things I'm kind of like I guess with the jacket still on I'm kind of like um, the conscience of six sex and hammer sex 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 or whatever remember that guy I'm sure he's still doing stuff he probably had he probably was intimidated into a change of wardrobe how many times have I made videos with the same pullover sweater? I didn't realize I had a Mr. Rogers thing that I wasn't consciously doing. But every time Mr. Rogers would start his show, he'd come inside and he'd take off his, his vest or something and he'd put a cardigan on and his slippers on and then he would hang out with you and he'd talk to you at a pace you could understand, which is why high people still like Mr. Rogers and they made Tom Hanks movie and all that. But... Um, I had a Mr. Rogers thing because I always would wear the sweater. I just throw it on and I'm like, well, I'm going to do a podcast. And also it's like a thing when it's cold. It's like second skin, natural fibers. It's made out of some kind of animal. Wool, alpaca, both, a lamb. That's a wool. So anyway, yeah, I had a Mr. Rogers thing going. I know you didn't ask about my fashion sense. I guess that's part of the extreme narcissism. I named that after other people, not me, but I am making videos and thinking that you need to hear what I have to say. But I just wanted to say, hey, uh, in Timothy it says, in the end times, you know, perilous times will come in the last days, like the end of the end of days, I guess, is more accurate, so that you would know it when people behave like this. I heard the 1920s, there was like a flaring up of, like a pack of hemorrhoids of this kind of thing. And then there was the 80s, you know, fantastic plastic, all that stuff, the yuppies, you know, the height of consumerism and all that stuff. And then they even told you when you were in school in the 80s that we're in consumer society and then eventually it will be post-consumer society. And we talk about fossil fuels and stuff like that. Right in school, right in regular public school in America. And they would tell you that. Um, and now, you know, unloving, unforgiving. That's the doubling down thing. The unforgiving is really terrible now. That's part of the narcissism thing. It's a condition people have. It's all about me. You know, so every, anything can be twisted. That's why, that's what the net, that's what's happening in social media with the narratives of where people keep making movies that the audiences, which are just anyone who goes to see movies, don't like. But all the people who make the movies tell you you love it. And that if you don't love it, then there's something wrong with you. You're prejudiced, you're racist, you're toxic, you're the wrong gender, you don't have enough gender, you wouldn't understand, you're, the, you're in the wrong turf, and all these things. And it's all just divisive stuff. But also it's doubling down, it's just refusing to admit, like no, you know that we don't like these movies and you keep making them anyway because it's what you want to make and you want us to like them and we don't love them so then you're telling us that we're bad because we don't like you know the twenty dollar movies <laughs> that we pay twenty dollars to see or watch them online or whatever so headstrong haughty traitors oh there's a lot of that people getting caught and exposed making videos and being exposed that they said that word that one time um, Where was I? Yeah. Brutal slanderers. The slander's out of control. That's, that isn't that, I would say we, isn't that what we do? 
people make videos online and they're trash talking somebody or something. It's mostly like here, go online and display socially acceptable anger or make a buffoon out of yourself and humiliate yourself by making videos that either they work or they don't work. Or, you know, even if it was like a good idea and they make a TikTok about a thing and then people are like, yeah, just that's a good idea, but not you, it didn't work, it didn't come across. And the humiliation where the whole world knows it because you got the hits or whatever. Um, but doubling down to being unloving and unforgiving I mean you see that when depending on what side of the conflict you are are with with Israel or Palestine and it's just all these it's always just innocent people dying hey get out of here get out of there don't do this and then seeing people behave badly you know like having it cost them their careers in America where they were like you know killing babies and all the stuff that happens when everybody's dying on both sides because it's war and their side was, yeah, our side, we got we got rid of them and they were like gloating over the deaths of people and the better judgment or the God in people, whatever came out, even though if they don't know what they believe, they're like, that's just gross. You're, I think you're fired now. So people got in trouble for this. And um, they're fighting for their side and they don't see the other side. But I think a lot of people now are actually, I'm impressed with the way a lot of people are. Where as much as the young people seem to be crazy, there's also all different mix of ages where they're like, yeah, just all the killing, like nobody wants that. They just want to go back to watching TV. They want movies and TV to be good again. But, you know, I don't know. Could it be perilous times, blasphemers? That happens all over the place. I, when, now that I'm more aware of other Christian YouTube videos that have big congregations, I see some horrible stuff and I'm like, hey, I don't think... I don't think that that's the way that I, that's not the relationship that I have with God. It feels like there's not enough fear of Him. They feel like it's all been saved already. There's these dominionist people that think like they have to take over everything. And then the more you look into that belief system, it seems like, yeah, this is like a form of antichrist of like whatever, like if you become buddies with Pope Francis or something, and it's like, yeah, that seems like that Abrahamic faith center kind of stuff. So. The, the blasphemers, are, a lot of blasphemers are people that are professed to be Christian, but they're like way off. I didn't realize there was so much of this. The um, prosperity gospels, these guys come and saying horrible things and, you know, uh, there's just so much of it. I didn't realize there was so much. There's the, there's the circus masses where they do, they, they do like a carnival mockery of Christianity. Oh, the jugglers and stuff like this, insane. That's old. But now you have people with their version, like mixing New Age stuff. Like, well, Jesus was just one of our guys. Like, you know, like Mohammed and Buddha and um, Godzilla and, and the pantheon of Hindu deities and whatever they have for, you know, just whatever name, Wicca and all those gods. And then the Baphomet have to be in there too. That's all just in different ways to worship, all finding our ways to, to God. No, not necessarily. It's very specific. I'm holding the book in my hands and it's Jesus. Just to be direct, it's Jesus. So a lot of people have weird ideas about Jesus, unhealthy ideas. People are drug takers. There's a famous painter who built a weird shrine to like any kind of religion. And then the whole point is you take LSD and you have distorted versions of, of Jesus things and it's all demons and stuff probably like your music. Well, music's that, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I mean, that's all about the vanity and the excess and all the pretty things and all that stuff. And also opens the doors to the demonic. You're, you're blurring the round, realms between reality and incorporeality, between the, the corporeal, material, and immaterial. That's your drug trips and all that stuff. I don't know where the ideas came from. It just came from me. And then the music they make, like hip hop right from the start with rap, gangster rap. But then maybe not the beginning of rap, but the beginning with M NWA, they were doing the Lord's Prayer in reverse. Like that's one of their tracks, right? Um, so it's, uh, it's mean, and it's angry. Look at the effect that hip hop has had on the culture. Is it a get together party vibe? No. All over the world you have, you know, like guys wearing wife beaters talking like urban patois of an American urban youth. And 
and it's just been exported to the whole world with the, you know, glasses and bling and backward base. It's like the way the mafia is now. The mafia, like in Eastern European countries and thugs and gangsters and stuff like that, there's an element of hip hop to it. I mean, what's the thing with the Russian guys is a cliche uh, wearing um, like the Kangol suits and all that stuff. That's like LL Cool J 1980s hip hop stuff and they're wearing the track suits and stuff. I just equate that with hip hop still. Anyway, that's that's mafia stuff, right? It's mob stuff in different countries. And it's like that mentality of, I guess, crime has infiltrated into the youth and it's part of hip hop. I mean, now they just sell their souls to the devil. And what do these guys that sell their souls to the devil do? Well, y you know better than I, and depending, unless you're older than me, like Little Nas X and Travis Scott and Kevin Gates and Doji Cat and Mickey Minaj and apparently Puff Daddy and everybody and definitely Beyonce and Jay-Z and and all of them and they all have a st Eminem they all have songs where they sold their souls to the devil maybe if you want to watch down this episode you'll watch that Good Fight Ministries they sold their souls to the rock and roll those guys have it nailed and like saying, here's why all the suit in a, in a, in a cool California surfer patois, they're, <laughs> they, they, they do these breakdowns of like, like they really do good breakdowns with cool images and everything because they got like a team of people working on it, I guess. And they'll tell you how, look, Superman was originally an evil mad scientist that was patterned after Aleister Crowley. And they show you the comic book pages. I'm like, wow. The origins of Superman was that. I thought he was the sun god with the serpent on his chest and it was all that kind of stuff, you know. And he, you know, he comes from the sun or whatever it is, Krypton, and he's alien and all this stuff. That's a demon. But Superman was like, they made all these Jesus parallels and stuff. Anyway, um, just the old gods, all the superhero stuff, right? But I'm going to try and stay focused on just like. I don't know, name your favorite YouTubers. A lot of it's predicated on vanity, whether it's a, you know, vanity, gluttony, the excesses of life. Like I said, right up front, a diss track. A diss track nails all this stuff on the list. Unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control. There's so much not self-control. That's the point, right? Make funny videos to humiliate yourself. And, you know, don't be sober when you do it. I'm guilty, I'm guilty of that. Um, not now. Not anymore. Um, having a form of godliness but denying its power. So we're not supposed to watch. So most of what I watched on YouTube was like complaining. And even to the points of gossip. Like, oh, what is this about? And I would try and see if it related to some kind of, oh, that's a reveal of occultism or it's a revelation of their methods. And it just became like a way of like, what horrible things are happening in your pop culture that's just bringing more Satanism into every stuff, everything and all the stuff that's in the Bible and the book of Revelations, like, got that. Oh, so who was the Scarlet Woman this year at the Super Bowl, movie awards, Oscars, music awards, uh, the baseball spectacular, whatever they do for base, World Series, NASCAR, what, what was the big, who was the Scarlet Woman at every event? who has the blood of the Christians on her hands. The whole point of the Scarlet Woman, I don't know if you're aware of this, I've said it before, but what the Scarlet Woman is, is she's like the whore of Babylon. She's like, you know, Jezebel, you know, possessed or whatever. She, she has, she's the Scarlet Woman because she's dripping red with the blood of Christians because, it, because perilous times. So now they're open with the Satanism and they have American Horror Story, Satan Apocalypse Season. And everybody's weird. Macaulay Culkin drinks blood and <laughs> makes his kids drink blood. <laughs> People are cheating at sporting events, drinking animal blood. Um, I'm laughing about it. It's horrible. But like, it's like the dumbest stuff. And people are doing it like, wait a minute, like you guys are signing up for the losing size, losing side to just like, hey, we want to be part of the end of the world party, like part helping it end, part getting our kicks, and then knowing you have to pay up and go to the lake of fire. Like, you're like, I'll repent at the end. I don't think anybody's thinking that. I think they're just going for it. But I think a lot of it's unwitting. I think this is like what I'm reading here about 
you know, but know in this, the last days, perilous times will come for men. I would say young men and young women. It's like a young people thing, but it's also contagious because there's a lot of, you know, embarrassing content of all ages. Humility, you know, Dignity Mart, um, Dignity Outlet Mall. It, it go, it's used, it goes in cheap, comes out cheap. It just keeps getting reused and reworn and recycled and it's, and it's all something wrong with it. Because that's why I went to the outlet mall. Dignity outlet. Uh, men will be lovers of themselves. It's like, I, I dare say, is it near, it's near omnipresent if you go to YouTube. You're going to see, unless you watch like old movies or, I don't know, there's a lot of content that's not vain. But didn't Solomon say all is vanity, right? There's a lot of good, <laughs> there's a lot of good truth for today. You know, in, in, in Proverbs, in, um, but in all his vanity with Solomon, there's a lot in there um, that's true for now. And it's like, yeah, everything is like, man, so much is selfish. So you're kind of just left with like, well, now I need God's help because everything makes sense. And you just can't do it without him. It's like, a, it's the perfect submission that works, you know, and he's got you. It's a good thing, though. You hope. You would hope. Some people think that they're saved. Like, I'm just saved. Like, that's it. I'm just saved. I'm good now. I've got my ticket to heaven. No, it's like work in progress. You can be tested right up until the end. Um, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud. I mean, everything I'm saying is like, I just like, name, any, name anything or anyone famous. The people doubling down when you don't like their performance, you don't like their movies, instead of saying, I'm sorry, I'll try better, or just being tore up about it. They're like, look, I have enough people online that are with me, and they say that I'm great. And you know what? I think most people are wrong. I'm different, I'm special, and I've just gotta, like I, ha I, am a, I have a godless existence, a lot of people. So this is, I'll make my stand, I'll make like, this will be my, you know, like in a weird way, they don't know that what they're trying to do is to like stand for God, but they're not, because they're like, it's an against God stance, where they're like, in defiance of all reason and humility, I'm just gonna double down because whatever the cause is, destroy the patriarchy, um, socialism, getting it right this time, Islam, it's the most, I'm it, out of religions, it's the most scariest one because they're the most violentest and you can't talk about them because they blow, they blow themselves up and stuff like that and they think it's pleasing to God. So they're like afraid of Islam. So they're like, well, I better be nice about that one. Because because they know people that are Muslim, but they don't. They're like armchair Muslims, like I say in America. I can say it like that, where they don't really know what they're teaching is, and they are good people, and there's a lot of good people that do read the Quran, and they want God, but there's just stuff that they're they're overlooking that's like it's hideous, and makes it evil teaching, and tells you to go and murder and stuff. And in the Bible, we're the ones getting murdered. Like all the people who love God a lot. Spoiler alert for all the for a lot of saints. Um, <laughs> if you love God a lot, you're going to have a horrible death tied between palms, turned into a limbless rectangle like the 110 martyrs of India. People are still dying today in other countries for being Christian, where in India they go into the village and they kill the village of Christians, and it's still happening. Um, and more to come as we go into the end of the end of days where dying 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 all day long we're dying and you would hope you know you and i both would be that you and i both would hope that we would be included amongst those who would be in his kingdom that has never an end forever rather than a lake of fire yeah uh, i want to see what the devil looks like in his humiliation and stuff but i want to have like the high vantage point i want to say that's the guy you know with all the other people that are with god so i would hope i would want that for everyone I'm getting more, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really hoping powerful people of influence and import are willing to join the good fight and have redemption arcs that probably ultimately will lead to martyrs' deaths, but they'll probably get in. And there's some really evil people that have done horrible things, and I'm thinking about redemption arcs of celebrities that die valiantly in Hunger Games, Thunderdome some kind of weird Tim and Eric death game show that they came up in snuff vision um, or <laughs> Rollerball, Battle Angel, Lolita Ball, um, what a, Maze Runner, The 100, the 
bat Japanese Battle Royale, the World Wrestling Federation death matches where the wrestlers were retired and they just jack them up full of all the juice, the transgender cyborg UFC league where they're allowed to tear each other's arms off. Oh, I tore the wrong arm off. I was only allowed to tear off the implant arm. And now he has, now I have to fight this guy again and he has two robot arms. I think I'm gonna lose, you know, to death. The perilous times. And people will line up for it because they'll have all these qualities required uh, of their hardened hearts and hurt and broken people. Instead of being broken and, fa and going returning to God, they just get possessed and consumed by demons and evil and all the worst feelings and the bad spirits and drugs and the soma and whatever else like cleaning products whatever else, uh, the last of the syrup um, computer cleaner whatever it is unloving unforgiving slanderers without self-control that's a problem now what do you have you still have somebody that becomes famous and everybody knows who they are and then you watch the fall and then they come back and they 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 apologize or they have they have, there's always usually an apology of some sort. Sorry, I was like that. <laughs> they come back with their hair dyed blonde. Um, traitors, headstrong, haughty. Oh, that's a problem. Haughty, lo like you know, that's the whole mentality of like you're not good enough for whatever they say, whatever's cool or not cool anymore. I don't know how to whatever's based or not based, whatever's not lowly or common or based. Um, Lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters. How much boasting is there? So much boasting, the humble brag. There's so much about people making videos where they're just like trying to slip in. Oh, here's just like seven things about how great I am, but I'm not just, I'm not, I'm not anybody. I'm just like, I'm just like some kind of guy, just some kind of gal. But you know, here's pictures from, uh, you know, they rented an expensive beach thing or something for, to take pictures in. And you paid for it, if because I mean, just like the idea of watching somebody. So much of it is online, like TikTok, Instagram, where people don't do anything, but they're like beautiful people, and they do stuff like, "Wow, look at all this stuff he has." The baller lifestyle. It's all about this self-absorption thing. Like everything that young people are told to think is cool. I suppose old people as well. Everything they're told to be that that they're supposed to think are cool or value is like stuff of youth that's fleeting and it's the excess where somebody if they do make a lot of money then like a couple years later they tell about how they lost all the money it's like winning the lottery they say that people that win the lottery it usually goes terrible for them and they lose all the money and they wind up not being rich for like their whole life unless they take it in I don't know not annuities or whatever they take it throughout life or whatever in installments or something then at least you have it. You have to manage. You still have to manage your money, I guess, or whatever. But some people take it all at once, and then, then it goes. And I feel like that's more prevalent now than ever. It was a horrible thing to find out that the average OnlyFans girl makes not even 150 bucks a month, like extra. Not like, I mean, like, like that's how much you make in a month if you do OnlyFans. So there's the proud the few, the brazen, the digital harlots. That's all this vanity stuff, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, lovers of money, boasters, doing anything for money, putting bits of plastic inside your body for money, all this stuff, no matter who's doing it, no matter how they identify. Um, pride parade. I mean, pride is the deadliest of the seven sins. It's the one that got the devil kicked out of heaven. He, tried, he wanted to be exalted above God. And then he said, well, I'll take over then, which was dumb. And he failed, obviously, and he fell, and a bunch of other angels fell with him. And now we have pride parades, and we have a whole month of pride about who you sleep with. Why, why, what's a pride about? It's a sexuality parade, and it's called the pride parade. Doesn't it feel like a trick on any self-respecting gay per person that, like, you know, struggles with whatever it is that I can't pretend to understand, that they, you know, hunger and thirst for their same kind or whatever? That seems like maybe perhaps part trauma maybe and part narcissism it's just it's just the easiest thing something sexualizes you at the wrong time and then you equate that with sex or love or whatever and then I don't know I don't want to get into all that I don't know but 
Pride Month and the Pride Parade. The rainbow doesn't belong to the devil, you know that? That's not their thing. <laughs> There's probably a rainbow over Jesus' throne in heaven, probably. They're just, they're just abusing the rainbow. So anyway, a pride about sexuality parade. That's really what it is, but they call it pride parade, which is also the deadliest of the seven sins. Because again, to reiterate, that's the one that got the devil kicked out of heaven. And that's just from one tiny thing. There's the Old Testament is full of cool stuff like this. That is great content for your own YouTube videos. You could probably do it better than me. But this is my open mic. And this is where we're going with it now. So uh, I'm having like an iDubbbz redemption arc. Except I didn't go to Islam. I went to Jesus. So it's going to be better than watching him make ants on a log. Or play with pop zits on Thanos or whatever. Poor guy. Um, I guess this is the part I'm supposed to say. Pray for iDubbbz and his wife. Um, <laughs> or something. <laughs> You got to get some kind of Christian YouTube guy to grab a hold of iDubbbz and <laughs> so, whatever, I don't know, I don't know, whatever, it's none of my business. But it's the YouTube stuff, it's the vanity stuff, the guy made a career because he was one of the meanest and he just said the things that people wanted to hear him say, which was coarse language, vulgar talk, hurting people, and having to deal with taking all the heat from that, and then whatever, whatever. But uh, the point is, um, what's the point? Just from one part of the Bible, from 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5, that thing that I kept reading to you over and over again, that's talking about, you know, perilous times. And it seems to be getting more increasingly perilous. And, you know, you can just fill in the blank of anything you can think of right now. And you know what? You're right, too. But... That's why I always say Planet Daddy issue, call your father, because you really do need his help. The more I realize, you know, where we live and how many different weird, ill-conceived ideas of God that people have, I really want to get down to what I would call brass tacks with God. And I'm like, wow, I have to change a lot of things. I have to obey. And not just for fear of him, or for the fear of like, well, I better get right with God because they're probably, I, I will call myself a Christian because I am. And they're probably, you know, the day will come when they're like, you know, go get them. Go out into the realm of the shadow band and bring me the blood of Scott Franklin Ree. I'm telling you, it's poison. It wouldn't help you. You would get zero adrenochrome. It's no good. But people are weird. The celebrities are telling telling you that they sold their souls to the devil and that they drink blood. One of the shockers for me was finding out that, because I didn't know this one, that Tony Stark Iron Man Robert Downey Jr., son of Morton Downey Jr., Jr., I think, um, that Robert Downey Jr., really, that the thing that he credited getting him the role of Iron Man was Aleister Crowley. And then it made me think, of that Black Sabbath song, Iron Man. And then when we were in lockdowns, Ozzy Osbourne said that he didn't, he didn't want him and his family to get, the, to get sick. So he prayed to the devil and they didn't get sick. <laughs> That's Ozzy Osbourne for, he had a relapse again. He had a relapse away from the, I guess he was, he went back to the devil, I guess, for help. So he wouldn't catch a cold. A nasty one, for sure. Um, but that's the world we live in. Like, they're letting you know, like, when's Johnny Depp gonna say, "Well, actually, I worship the devil. I, I do. I worship the devil, and I drink blood and everything. <laughs> I make blood paintings." So yeah, it's like all on the table. So all the, all the, just fill in the blank of, here's somebody that got famous and then here's the YouTube of them being exposed and humiliated and then doubling down on that and saying, you know what, no, no, I was right, I was right. There's other people that are backing me up. They'll tell me anything I want to hear. And, or even if they don't, people just doubling down anyway when they're wrong, when, just not being able to disagree. I remember a world where if you had a disagreement in Republican or Democrat, then you could still be friends and family. And now, 
as things deteriorate as we're told to. I only talked about that little, the little uh, one to five and three Timothy, you know, Timothy two, three, one to five. That's just one thing that like there's so much stuff in the book of Revelations I can't help but think that I'm going to keep breaking down stuff and then seeing how it relates to like Star Wars or something because it's it's uh, fun for me but also it's um it's like in the Bible like we live in those times like we have so much access to our own vanity and self-promotion filters filters to make everybody look good I was trying to figure out People are doing those M M NPC meme, NPC TikTok things where they're eating candy, yum, bubble gums, wow, all that, thank you, pow pow, and all, they're doing all these things and gang gang and all that stuff. And I was like, why are their faces, there's something wrong with their faces. And I realized it was a filter that they were doing to make their faces look slightly satanic or more like a cartoon. And they're making their, their, their mouths wider and their eyeballs like, like a cartoon. And then that's like, that's like their online avatar. You just put a filter over yourself. But it's also about vanity. Like being a heavy, you know, like a heavy uh, YouTuber and everybody knows that you're heavy. But you take pictures of yourself, because people do this. And then with the filters on, then they make themselves thinner, even though everybody knows that they're not thin like that. And they make themselves, you just, it's a vanity thing. Like you're tweaking pic, like, why you have so many pictures of yourself? I get it if you're making money and you're like, you're the, like Joe Rogan, I don't like what he does, but his face is, he has his face grinning at you with a third eye and that's his logo or whatever. He makes money, that's what he does. And people are gonna have their logos, but it's all about vanity and obsession with the self. And it's now more than ever, like it's just destroyed, it's destroyed the way that the youth thinks. Um, it's a me it's messing up with their minds. Like, how do you, how do you get them to unplug? It's just so there. It's available all the time. People flipping out over their phone. And um, boy, I'm glad I don't have those problems. I've always had a grudge against the cell phone. It stays in a Faraday box and it's off. I just feel safer that way. Just for me. I, don't like, I hate the cell phones. But there's no pay phones anywhere, so you have a cell phone. They come in handy, um, but I'm not at the ready, ch -ch 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 cell phone, whatever, like people are nowadays, yipes. So, but what's it all about? Selfies, the vanity, all this stuff, selfie sticks, just that there's stuff you can buy that they keep making that just keeps perpetually going to clearance or they recycle it and repackage it or it goes back to the factory and it just, here, put the selfie sticks out again with a new neon label, make it neon pink this time, another selfie stick. Melt the plastic down and make it make them colored uh, green and white or something. So, but the point is, the ring light. These are. This is all about vanity. This is all about what we've been talking about. What I've been talking about to you. This whole episode that I'm having. Thank you for watching me have this episode. It sounds like therapy, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> but I mean, like I remember thinking, yeah. Like the age of narcissism, the perpetual infant child, the suspended adolescence, cosplay, dressing up in costumes, all this stuff, corrupting people as young as possible with weird cartoons, getting people to fetishize. Eh, it's just a cartoon for kids, but it's like all naked animals that have human bodies and muscles and bosoms and things like that. And it's doing weird stuff to kids' minds. I mean, obviously, you thought it was just a harmless video game, Sonic the Hedgehog. Until people started doing, in, putting drawings of him online, and then people started thinking about Sonic the Hedgehog differently because of his feet. And then if you want to tell them that they're wrong, well, they have a whole online community of other weirdos and perverts that are going to go right along with that because they're obsessed with themselves. It's a kind of self-love. I can't love another person, and I probably never get a chance to. So you're going to fall in love with your anime waifu, have a body pillow. Surround yourself with plushies, whether you're an adult man or an adult woman. Um, do videos where you talk to toys and have toys play with each other as an adult. Making fun of pop culture with your toy collections. There's all kinds of weird stuff. It's all perversions. But it's all obsession with the self saying, look at me. I want attention. Give me attention. I know this is, I've had a YouTube open mic since 
like 2014 or something probably. Um, and I had SoundCloud before then. And I just liked the idea. I was like, I can have my own public access channel and I can do whatever I want. I wanted to do that when I was a kid when they had public access channels. And it was like there was just little shows that were only for wherever you lived or the surrounding areas. And um, like cable TV was 25 channels that was on a box that was connected to the TV on a really long wire co like cord. And then it was a, di a dial that went back and forth to 1 to 25 and it was like UHF or something probably. And that was it. It was like... I don't see them in movies and TV, but that was cable TV. It was like a thing attached to a cord attached to the TV that had a sliding bar of 1 to 25. Um, but all is vanity. Solomon said it all that long ago. But perilous times will come when people behave the way that we're behaving now. And look at how perilous it's been. You know, people have their makeup that they're selling and it burns the people's skin when they put it on. And like, oh, my image I made of myself. Idols unto themselves. Like, that's the whole point of, like, a lot of YouTube stuff is it's a look at me and here's assholes smoking cigar. Oh, I cursed. Here's got, you know... Bert Kreischer smoking cigars and then here's the other guy that's funnier than both of them making fun of these guys everything they do um, and um, you know everybody being seen and exposed revealing stuff that nobody should know about you and you know like and I've done it um, lurid details of your life funny stories of your, yours or other people's embarrass, embarrassment it's all humiliation of the self and it's all just for attention. Hey, I have something I think you want to hear. Do you want to hear about this outrageous thing that you can't believe? Here's my take on it. I have jokes. Um, but it's a dangerous thing. There's something wicked about the idea of a comedy club. Getting drunk or high and all the trouble that that leads to. And then you have the whole audience. I know what this is like. It's really, It's a really interesting feeling to know that everybody's laughing at the stuff you say, but that they're impaired, you know, or having to work in bars, you get to see all that stuff. Um, but anyway, to stay focused on uh, 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5. Yeah, we do definitely, we do, we do definitely, see if I can find it again. We do definitely have all that. Um, but know this, that in the last days, and I think what he means is like in the end of end of days, because even back then when Timothy and Paul were alive, they were trying to figure out, they thought that the return would come then because they were having perilous times back then. But now it's just so transparent and it's so immediate and available. It's just so easy. All you have to do is pick up your phone and make a video of yourself and you can put it online. It's made so easy. It's all stuff that you have to end. It's like getting us to have to answer for stuff in the judgment that we didn't think we'd have to answer for. All the slanderous words, all the stuff that we're told not to be, we're doing. I'm guilty of a lot of this stuff. Maybe I'm not lover of money necessarily. I like it, but you know, like I didn't, you know, I don't know. Uh, boasters, proud, blast, there's proud, there's the pride parade, all that stuff we said before. Blasphemers, there's so much blasphemy, even if people don't know that they're doing it. Disobedient to parents, there's plenty of that. There's an anti-parent movement. Um, Black Lives Matter was anti-family movement. Isn't that weird? That, that was all exposed. Unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control. All these things, like, I just, keep, I just keep going over and you can just think of examples of people humiliating themselves for content or just, you know, women showing off their bodies and stuff like that. And, um... And, for, oh, listen for this. So here's more. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning. That sounds like going into the housewives and all the stuff that we get from TV and, you know, Hoda and Kathy Lee getting drunk on wine during the day. Another thing God hates is wine bibbing. You're not supposed to get drunk, you're not supposed to drink, you know, it's not supposed to get drunk, they're getting drunk on TV. All the stuff that was on, you know, like the, 
the the learn the it's housewife stuff. All the stuff aimed the programming aimed at them for corruption of the family and everything, leanings to selfishness, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's God, the truth. Like before all things, love God above all else. And all this whole list here is not putting God first. It's like all the, you know, I guess you could say it's all the crimes of the evil one or even angels that fell. And there's no money and stuff like that. These are earthly things. But unloving, unforgiving, without self-control, brooder, despisers of good. There's all kinds of bad stuff. I better be careful what I say. But like Old Testament stuff of like angels getting into trouble down here on earth, so it would seem. I better not talk about that, but I'm like, oh yeah, like, I don't know. You gotta crack, there's, there's so much interesting stuff in the Bible, the more I learn, I wanna talk about it, but I have to be careful of what I pick, and I have to stay focused, and not go, you know, not get myself into trouble, or you by listening to me. I didn't realize that was the other thing. When I say all this awful stuff, um, as they've done in the past with the vulgarities and everything, I'm doing that to you too. Because I'm bringing you into my line of thinking, which is distorted, especially if I was drunk or something, and you know, I have a buzz, and I'm, and I'm doing a video, and I'm letting, you know, wicked things slip in. I've let this, let the spirits, a bad, you know, when you're drinking alcohol, it's like it's spirits. They call it spirits, and I'm having strong drink, drinking spirits, and then I'm, you know, leading both of us astray. We're not supposed to behave like that. And boy, there's a lot of that, how to behave in the Bible. I didn't realize that everything is in there. That's why they keep telling people like, no, you have to keep reading the Bible all the time. And not just the gospel and epistle for the day. You should be in the scriptures. I didn't realize there was so much to get from that. And I don't just mean like content for YouTube videos about pop culture and music. I mean, wow, music has been ruined for me. Like I know so much about music I'm like, yeah, I can't listen to that stuff anymore. These guys were like doing bad stuff to make their music sound like that on purpose. And they were having help from like demons because they said that they were. And they were doing magic spells and doing trances and channeling to get their chords and progressions and song ideas. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to hear that stuff. I feel like somebody's trying to trick me. Those are all your greatest hits. That's all the best of sex and drugs and rock and roll. It's all tainted with Aleister Crowley. There's that, that, that bald jerk there he is the uncle fester guy and looming he's looming in the background of music history of all the rock and roll and you can see the breakdown of the family leading to how broken families are today forget about opioid epidemic don't forget about it you can't but all the stuff with drugs and everything now and just the easy access and availability of what i will call huxley soma with all these vape shops um there's all different kinds of stuff the delta is the thc it's like you blast off on this stuff. I've had these things and I'm just like, yeah, this is just like, I'm like, wow, I can't, this is like weed, but you can just go buy it if you're an adult. And whatever that, all that stuff does to your body, it does stuff to your mind. It's, it changes the way that you think about things. And what's, what's the common thing of drunkenness is anger and fighting and disagreeableness and the worst coming out in people drunk. I mean, some people get nicer when they're drunk, but that's a bad habit too. Um, but all this stuff, the bringing out the ugliness and the availability of all this stuff now more than ever to end, the access to be doped up all the time, prescription drugs, your legal dope that you get from the doctor, people figuring out how to make cocktails out of stuff like where they had to put cough syrup behind the counter because of the codeine and all this stuff so um yeah it's just it's obsession with the self it's extreme narcissism tv that's what youtube is that's what my channel is called it's called extreme narcissism tv because youtube is extreme narcissism tv and i suppose to a lesser degree because it's just newer rumble for however long that lasts. Um, I did watch something on Rumble and I was like, oh, this is nice. Maybe I will connect my YouTube with the Rumble thing and just everything will go there too. Why not? So it'll be nice. I'm starting like a new, old, this is my new room. My, my colors of my, my show, I'll give some revelations of my method. The way my podcast has always looked, 
was the colors of I said it uh, willfully because I was in a realm in a shadow band and it was the colors of the psychological pharmacopoeia pharmacaea of prescription drugs all these colors all the day glow vapor wave and stuff this is all drug stuff this is like looking at black light posters in the 60s when they trip and take drugs and they'd stare at black light posters and trip out these colors have effects on our brains they know about colors in TV shows there was colors in in cartoons and video games that they have to warn you that people might have an epileptic seizure because of all the changing colors and stuff. So, I was from the realm, I'm from Future Scott from the realm and shadow band, and I may go into that for fun and stuff. I can do that, it's just the different lights and drape vines and stuff. But the whole point of that was that in the future everything was high all the time because I saw that coming as I drove back and forth across the country and I would see the gas stations and truck stops and the banners they all had banners of we've got CBD CBD and they do they still do they still have CBD and now they have Delta 8 9 7 THCH 9 I don't even know what all these things are all right Al Alta Delta Gamma Beta it's just legal ways to get high and you really do get high from them because I've had that I've had the experience of it and I was like yeah it's just like being high um, probably not as good as I remember from that though, of pot or whatever. But it's all, it's all bad stuff, so it's like, I don't want any part of it. I don't want to do that. But, it is a thing where they told us, and you know, like that's part of the book of Revelations is the pharmacaea, it's the drug stuff. So, but it all comes into the self-absorption, lovers of self, just indulging in, that's, I just read that to the indulging in every all the pleasures the hedonism the the weedonism the weed culture the vape shops opening up all over the place as businesses closed down the new businesses that open up are vape shops I don't even know enough about this vape stuff where do these things come from how do they make this stuff how do they make the soma why do so many of the labels have a snake on it or a pyramid or it's called the beast or it like I'll have names like this that have like a tiger on them or the devil or they have something with horns of a cow skull and these are just like vape things you can buy um, <laughs> I saw one one of the vape things was called I think it had Vincent Van Gogh on it and it was called he was like the mascot and it had Vincent Van Gogh and it was called GMO cookie you know vape and had CBD Delta all the things I don't know what they are and I'm like yeah that's that's book of revelations that's the pharmacaea being high all the time it leaves you more open to realms of the incorporeal you're blurring the lines of sobriety and not sobriety and you're opening yourself up to bad influence like you know how the rock stars got all their ideas for the music they opened themselves up. I don't know what it was. Something took me over. I was Beyonce at the Super Bowl and I got possessed by Sasha Fierce. I was Nicki Minaj and I got possessed by Roman Zelansky. And you can keep going, talking about I felt like the muse took me over. I don't know what happened during my performance. Something came. The comedians talk about this, talk about being, it's like being possessed. You get up there and you have this feeling like you're possessed. They probably are. I didn't realize how on the nose that they were. Like when Bob Dylan told you over and over again, he sold his soul to the devil. He did. And look at the influence he had. And you know what? I never liked his music or his singing. But he did get really famous because when I say Bob Dylan, you know who that is. And um, all these people, not all of them, but a lot of them, they do live for a long time because they're afraid to face dad. That's my thought. They're like, oh, I don't want to face dad. They do, you know, it's the, the tragedy of the wealthy elite, or that they drink blood or whatever. I don't really know. Uh, probably both. But anyway, um, we definitely have all that ego, vanity, and pride. And I really do blame the phone and the internet. Like, you could just say the internet, but since the internet thing is the phone, you know, for a lot of people anymore, Oh, I'll take a picture of this or find out about a thing. Should I buy this thing at the Goodwill? Oh, wow, on eBay they're going for $30 and it's 99 cents at Salvation Army or whatever. And then you sell it. Okay, cool. It is a useful thing. But it's also a really a tragic thing 
the idea that there's like that they have statistics on numbers of girls that that want to start only fans as soon as they're old enough and they're out of high school they think that they're going to make money by staying home and being beautiful and all the you know all the the tragedy and bits of plastic that come along with that and the humiliation and all that stuff and it turns out that there's a lot of people that do this all over the world and maybe it's not called only fans or whatever but they make like 150 bucks a month you know which would have to be in addition to whatever else they have to do and it's all you know like on either side of it whether you're watching that or paying for that or you're the entertainment it's all humiliation parade that's all the devil wants is just to humiliate us and the easiest way to humiliate us is to use the same trick that got him not a trick but to use what happened to him it's pride he wants the devil wants you to be like him but you're gonna fail he turned away from God and got kicked out of heaven and now he's the Lord's instrument to try and usher us onto the narrow path so that we don't wind up in a lake of fire where the devil's going we have a chance he has no chance. He knows where he's going. All right? And a lot of other demons, all of them, are going with him. But in the meantime, their whole point is just hang out and destroy us and get us just to hang out and be intoxicated and inebriated and drunk and high and turned on and lusted up over pornography and obsessed with lewd thoughts and all the stuff that I thought was my cornucopia of fun stuff that we can talk about. Um, on my YouTube videos on my open mic here, my free open mic, I never made a dime by the way, never tried to. I did want to sell Planet Daddy issue t-shirts or a t-shirt that had Jesus' face and silhouette so I only needed one color ink and it would just have Jesus' head and at the bottom it would say in all caps, THE END! Because that's one of his names that I like. That's it! <laughs> they call him The End, I like that one. There's a lot of good, he's, him and the Ark of God, I like that one for the Mother of God. The Plague of Demons, I love that one, for the Theotokos, the Mother of God, all this stuff. And then you got the na different names of, of God. And um, that's where we live. That's where we live. Like, the music is satanic, the movies are satanic, horror films are bad for your health. It's probably bad for your health to play video games and running around shooting stuff. It's probably healthier if you're gonna, you can't give up video games, that you would play Mario Kart and stay away from Rainbow Road. I always thought that video games were just like a source of like distress. Like video games cause stress. Like why would you want to spend all your time playing video games and they're frustrating? That's the word I want. Video games are a source of frustration. And it's such a popular thing. But like the only way I'd want to play video games if I wanted to would be on the easiest setting so I could have fun and do the experience and whatever the game is. But people get so mad like it is a satisfying thing for a lot of people to see a console destroyed because if they play video games they know how nice it would be when they're frustrated to just smash the box because it's a natural impulse probably to want to destroy it i think i got something in my eye it's a natural impulse to want to just just destroy the lucifer's evil dream box thing and smash the xbox you're at a crossroads you're making a choice between heaven and hell and the Xbox is one of your crossroads. Twitter was Twitter, and it's just idle chatter, Twitter. And now it's X. Elon Musk said you're at the crossroads now. You're entering into the emerging social credit system, which is part of Book of Revelation stuff. And, you know, one system worldwide. You won't do any trade, or any business, or any selling or buying without the mark of the beast. And it's like, what is it? Like a little pen thing? What? It's gross what is it I don't know but um, people are scanning their groceries with their hands at Whole Foods that sounds like the future but uh, yuck it sounds like you know I think I'm gonna have to pick God over evil and um, you know me trying to get into the smart city Probably no. Probably wherever you go, they want it to all. Everybody will be eating soylent, except for the rich people. They, they are having barbecues of humans. Probably whatever. It's weird down here. Who would have thought that the richest people in the world were evil 
and that they they just wanted to serve everybody up to the devil because their hearts were so hardened and yet they're killing us and they're our leaders and we have to pray for them and hope that some of them are good guys with redemption arcs that are willing to you know like rather than go to hell they're like well I guess it's time for a martyrdom it's my hour it's my my last show or whatever if it's a celebrity or a politician or whoever may pop up a YouTube influencer that found their way to one true faith. Um, a lot of people talk about God, but they get it wrong too. And it's also a very scary thing where Jesus says, Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will be granted entry into the kingdom. And he even says, I don't know if I'll get it exactly right, but he said, I'll tell you, I'll say, Get out of here, I don't know you. From God, I assure you. As I've said many times before for years, nothing could be worse than being rejected by God. That's why I say planet daddy issue because it's the one issue that everybody has for sure. There's no way out of this. Everybody is planet daddy issue. We all have that issue. You have no idea how bad you've been. And you're probably way better than I've been. And if you're younger than me, then you have opportunity to not become one of those ones whose heart turns cold turn that thing on and figure out how it is to set yourself right with God and I don't know if I should be talking about that but reading the Bible would help and finding <laughs> finding out like how far short we fall from being what he wants us to be and how caught up we are in you know um, how caught how caught up we are in ourselves and our selfishness and the things that we want without thinking about if that's really the way that we should be living. And a lot of people think they're doing just great. And maybe some are, maybe some aren't. Um, but definitely, there's so much stuff in the Bible that's like prescient to right now in terms of stuff like, here's where we're heading, you ready for the end of end of days? We're setting it all up. That's now. There's a lot of that. So I would say, call dad and keep calling, be persistent. And if in doubt, you can do what was given to me, which is, I believe, a song from God to man, from the four tops, where it has the bride and the bridegroom are in the song, in the lyrics, it's there. And it is four tops, reach out, I'll be, it. I'll be there. It's a song that means keep praying, because that's your comforter. Keep praying and, and break and, and, and break down and you're gonna need tears. You'll know you're making progress when you're praying to God and you start crying. You're like, oh, I guess I'm crying now. That's a good, that's a good start. You're on the right track. Don't let anybody hear you though. That's why he says, go inside in private where no one can hear you because I know all the secrets. Now, you know, now talk and make sure the neighbors can't hear you. I don't know where you live. Go to a closet, whatever, under a blanket, inside, whatever you got to do. But just make sure that it's Jesus. That's the name he told us to use. That it's God, and then you, that you would talk to him. Um, <laughs> Planet Daddy issue. Call your father. Be good. I don't know how it works through the internet, but I hope that if you're watching this, that when I say bless you, and I'm saying that bless you, then that means that he does that. Because my impression, one of the early things. I learned about God was that if you say, if you really mean it and you say bless you to someone, even though I don't know who's watching this specifically or what you look like necessarily, I still will want you to have the blessing. So I mean that. So how many did you get so far? I hope they all sink in and God gives them to you where you need them because that would be the blessing. It's perfect, right? So, um, so bless you and be good and call dad. <laughs>